Hello, welcome to evening prayer for Tuesday the 2nd of March. Today we remember Chad of Litchfield. He was, uh, he's described as a missionary, which is pretty much on the nail. Uh, having come down from the Kingdom of Northumbria, basically the northeast of England uh, and bits of Scotland as well were included in it. But at that time he comes down uh, at the point at which the Midlands, Mercia, as it was known, is turning towards Christ. And he has a short but very crucial role in making that happen by structuring the church for mission. We have a habit in the church of structuring ourselves for maintenance and ministry, but not mission. And Chad's ministry was all about creating an outward facing church to go out into the community and bring people to Christ. A man very, very much to give thanks for. He died in 672. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Psalm 52. Why do you glory in evil, you tyrant, while the goodness of God endures continually? You plot destruction, you deceiver. Your tongue is like a sharpened razor. You love evil rather than good, falsehood rather than the word of truth. You love all words that hurt, O, deceit, o you deceitful tongue. Therefore, God shall utterly bring you down. He shall take you and pluck you out of your tent and root you out of the land of the living. The righteous shall see this and tremble. They shall laugh you to scorn and say, this is the one who did not take God for a refuge, but trusted in great riches and relied on wickedness. But I am like a spreading olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the goodness of God for ever and ever. I will always give thanks to you for what you have done. I will hope in your name, for your faithful ones delight in it. Psalm 53. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Corrupt are they and abominable in their wickedness. There is no one that does good. God has looked down from heaven upon the children of earth to see if there's anyone who is wise and seeks after God. They have all gone out of the way. All alike have become corrupt. There is no one that does good. No, not one. They have no knowledge, those evildoers, who eat up my people as if they are bread and do not call upon God. There shall they be in great fear. Such fear as never was. But God will scatter the bones of the ungodly. They will be put to shame because God has rejected them. Oh, that Israel's salvation would come out of Zion when God restores the fortunes of his people. Then will Jacob rejoice and Israel be glad. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Psalm 44, beginning at the first verse. Then he commanded the steward of his house. This is Joseph. Fill the men's sacks with food as much as they can carry and put each man's money on the top of his sack. Put my cup, the silver cup, in the top of the sack of the youngest with his money for the grain. As he did, and he did, as Joseph told him. As soon as the morning was light, the men uh, were sent away with their donkeys. When they'd gone only a short distance from the city, Joseph said to his stewards, Go follow after the men, and when you overtake them, say to them, Why have you returned good evil for good? Why have you stolen my silver cup? Is it not from this that my Lord drinks? Does he not indeed use it for divination? You have done wrong in doing this. When he overtook them, he repeated these words to them. They said to him, why does my Lord speak such words as these? Far be it from your servants that they should do such a thing. Look, the money that we found in the top of our sacks, we brought back to you from the land of Canaan. 
Why then should we steal silver or gold from your Lord's house? Should it be found with any one of your servants, let him die. Moreover, the rest of us will become my Lord's slaves. He said, Even so, according to your words, let it be. He with whom it is found shall become my slave. But the rest of you shall go free. Then each one quickly lowered his sack to the ground, and each opened his sack. He searched, beginning with the eldest and ending up with the youngest. And the cup was found in Benjamin's sack. And they tore their clothes. Then each one loaded his donkey, and they returned to the city. Judah and his brothers came to Joseph's house while he was still there, and they fell to the ground before him. Joseph said to them, What deed is this that you have done? Do you not know that one such as I can practice divination? And Judah said, What can we say to my Lord? What can we speak? How can we clear ourselves? God has found out the guilt of your servants, and here we are, my Lord's slaves, both we and also the one in whose possessions the cup has been found. But he said, Far be it from me that I should do so. Only the one in whose possession the cup was found shall be my slave. But as for you, go in peace to your father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I bind unto myself the name, the strong name of the Trinity. By invocation of the same, the three in one and one in three. Of whom all nature has creation, eternal father, spirit, word. Praise to the Lord of my salvation. The salvation is of Christ the Lord. You are worthy, O our Lord and God, to receive glory and honour and power. For you have created all things, and by your will they have their being. You are worthy, O Lamb, for you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed for God saints from every tribe and language and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests serving our God. And they will reign with you on earth. To the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honour and glory and might for ever and ever. Amen. We hold before God those who lead the nations, who have immense responsibility before God and human beings. Whatever they have been, Lord, guide them to a better place, inform their decisions, and help them to bow the knee to you. We hold before God those for whom life is very difficult. Those who have difficult decisions to make and who honestly do not know the right thing to do. We hold before God those who have difficult people to work with. Those who suffer unfair treatment, unjust criticism, unappreciated work. We hold before God those who have difficult tasks to do and to face and fear that they may fail in them. Those who have difficult temptations to face and who know only too well that they may fall to them if they try to meet them alone. We hold before God those who know they can be their own worst enemies. We hold before God those who are sad because someone they loved has died. And any who are disappointed in something for which they hoped very much. We hold before God those people who are impatient with the coronavirus restrictions and who may be in danger of infecting themselves or others. We hope for God, those in deep trouble this day because of the lawlessness that is in parts of Nigeria and Niger. We live before the Lord, those children who have been abducted this year and especially the 300 girls taken from a state school just recently. The Collect for today. Almighty God, from the first 
fruits of the English nation who turned to Christ. You called your servant Chad to be an evangelist and bishop of his own people. Give us grace so to follow his peaceable nature, humble spirit and prayerful life, that we may truly commend to others the faith which we ourselves profess. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Trusting in the compassion of God as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. In life's unpredictability, may God be the steady hand on your tiller. Remember that he understands your uncertainty and stands able to give you stability, peace and direction. He is your peace amid crashing waves, your shelter in storms and your comfort in chaos. May God our Redeemer show us compassion and love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.